Yes. I know, but it's easier for me to read these things without glasses. I'm nearsighted. This is the OTB Network. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this week's edition of Horses and Courses. 15 races to bring you from five different racetracks. First four, super big day on Saturday down at Delta Downs, including their million-dollar jackpot. But we will kick it off with the one-mile treasure chest, Spirit Seeker, odds on. Mitt steps up. Renegade. And they're off. And the treasure chest at Delta Downs all broke beautifully. Let me go, broke smartly, but there goes Warpaint Annie, as expected. She goes right to the lead, flashing that early speed as they run through the chute. In close attendance is Let me go, but she's now dropping back just a bit. Belly of Medallia is right next to her. On the outside, Remit is at the back of the pack, then Fools in Love, and Spirit Seeker is the trailer. About three and a half lengths from the front with one lap to go. It's Warpaint Annie on the inside, Let me go between horses, and Bella Medallia on the outside. Fools in Love sits right behind that trio now, and she looks to advance as they head to the back stretch. Break of a length and a half back to Remit, who is second last, and Spirit Seeker is still your trailer. As they're going to the back stretch, things are bunching up. War Paint Annie has company from Fools in Love. Elvis Trujillo wants to pull alongside, and they do with a half mile to race. Let me go and Corey Nakatani out there, three wide and four wide is Bella Medallia. They are stacked up across the track as they go to the far turn. Gerard Malonson has Remit right behind the leaders in a good spot. Spirit Seeker is going to need to rally. She is five lengths behind as they hit the that second and final turn. There goes Bella Medallia. And Bella Medallia and John Jacinto now strike the lead by two and a half. Fools in Love is struggling in second. Here comes Remit, putting in a big bid now as they're coming for home. It's Bella Medallia with the lead. Remit and Malonson on the outside, coming right alongside now with just over a furlong to go. Fools in Love is racing in third. Spirit Seeker, not today. Remit has a head in front. Bella Medallia is trying to fight back. We have a two-horse race with a sixteenth of a mile to go. Bella Medallia is getting the upper hand, showing her class. It's Bella Medallia in the treasure chest. Remit finished second. Spirit Seeker got up for third, and Fools in Love was fourth. Well, kudos to John Jacinto. I think he did a lot right on this smallish Philly offspring of Medallia Dior. He tried to break the race open on the turn. He got some distance, and then probably backers of Remit thought that maybe they were home as they, she had ranged up on the outside, but you saw about as quick and as decisive a little spurt for Be Bella Medallia as the second choice, as you will see. Actually, <laughs> final margin is a length and three quarters after uh, it looked as though Remit was in good shape at the top of the lane. And Spirit Seeker, who was going for four in a row, does finish third as a non-threatening 9-10 to 10 favorite in Saturday's uh, Delta uh, Treasure Chest. First stakes win. The comeback on the inside, you know, it's not that usual where you come back on the inside and you win a ding-dong finish. Actually, won rather comfortably, but we will see a comeback on the inside in just a moment. Up next, from Delta Downs, we have the ninth running of the Delta Mile, and the 8-5 to five favorite is Hooray for Hollywood. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Delta Mile. All seem to come away well. Flashing speed here is Hooray for Hollywood, who strikes out for the lead with decisive moment right to his inside. These two only heads apart now and separating themselves from the field by about two and a half lengths as they leave the chute. Kerwin Clark has decisive moment with a head in front on the inside. Hooray for Hollywood's going to press the pace with just over a lap to go. Motto Mondo's on the outside. Then comes Avis Pegasus tucked in nicely behind the leaders. From there, it's Omniscient and two and a half lengths back to the back two. They are and Music came in Glenwood Canyon. 
a uh, quarter mile here, winning 23 and 28 100 seconds, decisive moment, moving comfortably on the lead. Hooray for Hollywood, getting just a little bit closer in second. Three deep out there is Matt Omondo, is moving up behind rivals, Avis Pegasus. That one's only two lengths off the lead, but is behind rivals. Length and a half back then to Omniscient. He's got a spot down along the inside, and Music Came is laying second last, but only five off the leaders now as they bunch up. It's two more then, back to Glenwood Canyon, who's going to have to pass them all to win the mile. On to the far turn. The half went in 48.09. We've got three across the track. Decisive moment on the inside. Hooray for Hollywood right between their matching strides. On the outside, it's Matt Omondo. Then a length and a half back to Omniscient. A struggling Avis prospect is backing up. Then comes and music came. Here comes the top of the lane. It's Hooray for Hollywood on the outside. Now sticking ahead in front of a very game decisive moment. These two hook it up with a furlong to go. Then it's Matt Omondo on the outside. Omniscient to the inside. Any one of four could win this with a 16th of a mile to go. It's decisive moment. Hooray for Hollywood. Matt Omondo on the outside. Decisive moment. Wins it by a neck in the mile. Hooray for Hollywood. His second, third went to Matt Omondo. Well, the betters had it right. Uh, you know, the, the, the short price horses all finishing in the Superfecta. There was a dead heat for fourth, and the se third choice does win it. But once again, down on the inside, Decisive moment. Head Clark did a very, very good job here. Decisive moment was headed at the eighth pole by the favorite. Hooray for Hollywood under Mar Martin Garcia. Once again, you know, thinking that maybe, <laughs> you know, the, the eventual winner was not going to be the winner. But decisive moment doesn't make every pole a winning one, as we just mentioned. But, uh, this offspring of with distinction comes back on the inside. Last year, decisive moment at nearly 50 to 1 was runner up in the Delta jackpot. Well, this year, for a purse worth about one eighth the price, does get the victory in the Delta Mile. Up next, time for the two year old Phillies to run for half a million dollars in the Grade 3 Delta Princess, the favorite, Candera, at 6 to 5. Waiting on your vet, Sangalo. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Delta Downs Princess. Candrea broke sharply. Down along the inside, now I know, goes right to the lead as expected. Delightful Magic moves up. On the outside here, Citizen Advocate tugging on the reins. And she's going to make for a hot pace. Candrea advances from fourth to third now as they're coming past the grandstand. Now I know and Perry Compton leading by one length. Delightful Magic and Candrea battling it out for second. Citizen Advocate is now third. Any minis on the inside fourth. Then comes Yearly to the far outside. Devious Intent is at the back of the pack here with Kulati. And then comes Yvette Sangalo who is second last in the trailer's gospel gal as they go around the first turn. Quarter mile accomplished in 22-31. They're moving right along. Now I know setting a taxing pace up by one length. Delightful Magic right off her flank racing in second and here comes Candrea making her presence felt on the outside a very close third. Any Minis running a big race in fourth along the inside. Those front four are now four lengths clear of the rest of the field. On the far outside, Yeardley's trying to make a move. Devious Intent is advancing. Kaladi is on the inside. Yvette Sangalo kicking it in from the back of the pack. It's three lengths to Gospel Gal and giving out here a Citizen Advocate who is dead last. The half went in 40 46.71, three quarters and 112.07. They're still chasing now, I know. She's done it all on the lead. She's up by two and a half. In second here is Delightful Magic. Candrea is struggling. On the inside, it's any many. To the far outside, Devious Intent. They've straightened away. Now I know, and Perry Compton up by five with a sixteenth of a mile to go. They're not going to get to now, I know. And now I know she can run for sure. She wins the Delta Downs Princess. Second went to either Any Mini or Yvette Sangalo. Well, obviously, I was juxtapositioning vowels and constants. Not a good day for Candrea. But speed once again down inside. Very well rewarded by Perry, for Perry Compton. And now I know. And Donnie Van Hemmel, owner, trainer, now five for five. Went off as the second choice at nearly four to one. Scores a convincing convincing four-length victory for this Oklahoma bred. Candrea did beat one horse, and the chart tells us Candrea beat Citizen Advocate by 67 lengths exactly. I think when Citizen Advocate, who, by the way, was a 7-to-1 shot, 
when uh, her running line comes back out, I think she got beat by somewhere in the neighborhood of about 95 lengths, I kid you not. But now I know Perry Compton put her on the front, and she just improved her position there from there, returning $9.80 to win the half a million dollar Delta Princess. Bringing us to our $1 million race uh, on this week's show, you know, full field of 10, and we talked about it all week leading up to the Delta Jackpot. This, uh, you know, bull ring, late season, two-year-old stakes, now graded, assures the winner of a starting spot in the Kentucky Derby with a $600,000 purse. I feel as if the runner-up, who receives $200,000 for the Delta Jackpot purse, is almost as equally guaranteed one of the 20 post positions in the Kentucky Derby if they want it. $1 million, two-year-olds, the two-to-one favorite, Bob Baffert's drill. We're in the gate. And they're off in the Delta Downs jackpot, and they all came away pretty well. Bumping, though, was Sabercat and Doug's buddy on the outside. Baz Mati is showing early speed to the inside seven. Lively Sins is right behind him. Maya Donis and Drill move up in the middle part of the track now, and those two take over the lead. On the outside, Jake Moe is in close attendance, begins to cross over. Behind him, it's Doug's buddy, and rushing up here is Lori's Rocket. Two lengths back then to seven. Lively Sins on the inside. Tismo is in that eighth position, but getting closer, and then it's five lengths back to the back two, who are Saber Cat and Longview Drive. The two favorites up front. It's Maya Donis and Trujillo on the inside. Drill and Martin Garcia right off the rail. They're in their own speed duel with Jake Moe moving ahead into third now. Back along the inside is Lori's Rocket tucked in behind the leaders. The quarter in 22-11. They went the half in 45 and 41 one hundredths. They are blazing with a half mile to go. Drill on the outside sticks ahead in front. Maya Donis is trying to fight back. Two lengths back then to Lori's Rocket. Then Jake Moe on the outside is in fourth. Baz Mati is laying fifth on the inside. Then comes Doug's buddy. Behind those is seven lively sins. Tismo is checking out. Sabercat goes by him and it's two lengths back then to the trailer. Longview Drive. Three quarters and one, 11, 60, and Drill takes command. It's Drill around the far turn, but Basmati moves up. And now Basmati is challenging Southern California Invader Drill. And on the outside, here comes Sabercat making a huge move. And Sabercat sticks ahead in front. Basmati is back to second. Drill is done. On the outside, coming on late is Longview Drive, but they've straightened away at the 16th pole, and Sabercat has the lead. Dropping back second is Basmati, but it's going to be Sabercat and Gerard Melanson to win the Delta Downs jackpot. Basmati finished second. Longview Drive was third and fourth. Went to seven lively sins. Well, interesting race in the field of 10. The, the first two choices in the wagering, they run seventh and ninth. Drill, I mean, it was strong internal fractions in this race. If you look at the charts, all the horses up early just collapsed under the weight of that Early speed, Maya Donis, who had scored uh, a convincing victory in the Jean Lafitte, was up on that pace, pressing drill as the 7-2 second choice under Elvis Trio. Maya Donis only beat one horse, but Sabercat, you know, recent winner of the Garden State, just before that broke the maiden, has won three races in a row. Steve Asmussen, uh, you know, 46th birthday, 6,000 wins, now a million dollar, a heck of a week for Steve Asmussen and the familiar silks of the Winchell Thoroughbreds. And this is the second generation of the Donut King, you know, the burgundy and white uh, stripes. But Sabercat, who won by four very impressively, was last early in this race for Gerard Melanson and had the 22 and change, 45 and change, 111 and change pace to run at. Also move on the turn, an inside out move now, that might have been benefited optically optically by the fact that the other horses on the front end were decelerating at that point in the race rather rapidly. So Sabercat might have just been constant velocity and looked good on the television screen because the others were shortening strides dramatically. But the $18 winner of this year's Delta Downs jackpot, Sabercat received $600,000 in graded earnings. He, all of these horses had zero 
except drill if my math was right. So Sabercat, he's on his way to the Kentucky Derby. If he likes, I believe Basmati with the $200,000 for running second, all set. And heck, Longview Drive, who receives $90,000, is probably halfway. Or maybe, well, we'll see. We'll keep this chart handy, and we'll see uh, come the first Saturday in May and what the low earner in graded earnings is. But uh, I think it's fair to say that the exacta in Saturday's Delta jackpot is all set if they should choose to accept their assignment in the Kentucky Derby. Churchill Downs, one stakes race on Saturday. This is going to be a mile and eighth on the turf to River City. Tajoui, the 9-5 to five favorite. In the gate. And they're off in the River City Handicap and Gleam of Hope was squeezed up as he let them go and was taken right back off heels. And Zimmer is being sent today by Calvin Burrell and he's really made his intentions very clear right from the get-go. And Zimmer has gone out and he's gone out hard. He leads already by a length and a half. Plutonium is racing in second as they pass beneath the twin spires. Bergerac is tracking, racing in third and racing quite freely. A break then of two and a half lengths to Cherokee Lord who's now in fourth position. Tajua is in fifth and then on the inside is Gleam of Hope. The black colours is Blue Street and at the back of the field is Ali's event, the quarter in 24 and 2 and it is Zimmer and Calvin Burrell who takes them to the back stretch. Towards the outside in second now is Bergerac. Racing in third is Plutonium as they go down the back. A break then of two and a half lengths to Cherokee Lord who's racing in fourth position. Tajaweed has now worked to the hedge. He's racing in fifth. Gleam of Hope is in sixth. Towards the outside Blue Street is in seventh and through the halfway point of the 34th running of the River City Handicap. Ali's event sees them all and is eight lengths off Zimmer who still leads the parade. About to lead the back stretch the half in 49 and 1. Zimmer is out in front by a length and a half. Bergerac is racing in second and now in third. Gleam of Hope with round the wide outside Blue Street then pushed along his Cherokee Lord. Tajuid has plenty to do. Ali's event is brutally wide. Plutonium sticks towards the inside hedge but still it is Zimmer who is out in front. Zimmer now by just over a length. Here's Blue Street set down for the drive inside the final full and a half. Blue Street has now got the lead. Gleam of Hope on the outside. Ali's event and Tajaweed racing deep inside the final furlong. Blue Street has gone clear by three lengths and it's Blue Street who's going to win for the tenth time and gives Robbie Alvarado his fourth win in the River City Handicap. Blue Street by many lengths. Ali's event and Gleam of Hope, Tajweed and Bergerac next. And what on paper may have seemed a very evenly <laughs> matched bunch certainly didn't look that way on the racetrack as Blue Streak scores an authoritative four and a half length victory as the second choice in the wagering. This offspring of Street Cry. Uh, grandsires of Machiavellian and Capote, and even though Capote was a two-year-old champion in the United States, uh, there was a lot of turf pedigree there, top and bottom. Eddie Canale, second-time trainer. This used to be the Todd Pletcher uh, runner for his Ansu stable. Very impressive. I have to tell you, folks, when handicapping this race with a field of eight, I thought it was as evenly matched a bunch as you could find. Heck, the longest shot on the board was Zimmer, who was 18-1 to 1 and was in front in the lane. But uh, Blue Streak, who we've seen in New York, scores the authoritative, convincing victory, beating Alley's event and Gleam of Hope, returning $7.40 in the River City Handicap. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, Woodbine and Hollywood Park.
And time to go up for the weekend racing at Woodbine. Up first on Saturday afternoon, six furlongs, the Kennedy Road. They're at the post. They're off in the Kennedy Road Stakes. Paso Doble, and now to the inside is Hollywood hit on the outside. Essence Hitman strides to the lead, and it's Essence Hitman in front of the, in the early going. Hollywood hit his second gypsy ring between horses, third. Signature Reds on the outside, fourth and two anks off of Essence Hitman. Back to Paso Doble and Fatal Bullet Essence Hitman. That opening quarter was 22 and 2. Essence Hitman with three furlongs to go in the Kennedy Road. Hollywood hit to the inside in second. Gypsy ring to the outside of Hollywood hit. Signature Red is fourth and four lengths off the lead. Then Fatal Bullet and Paso Doble. Jesse Campbell and the track record holder Essence Hitman over to the top of the stretch off a half in an eye popping 44 and two. And it's Essence Hitman in the run to the eighth pull. On the outside, Gypsy Ring is coming hard. Signature Red, Fatal Bullet on the far outside. Final 16th of a mile. Essence Hitman heroically held on to win the Kennedy Road over Gypsy Ring and Signature Red. The running time, 108 and 3 fifths. What a performance for Essence Hitman. If you recall, Essence Hitman... The summer of 2010, ladies and gentlemen, the runner-up in the Amsterdam to the brilliant Discreetly Mine, who was so fast that time of year. But Essence Hitman, always full of brilliant speed, makes every pole a winning one under Cowboy Jesse Campbell. And yes, does hold on over Gypsy Ring as nearly the, long, the second longest shot on the board is Essence Hitman. The favorite, Paso Doble, Centennial Farms, ladies and gentlemen, finishes last under Pat Husbands as the two-to-one choice. But Essence Hit Hitman, the offspring of Spice Town, makes every poll a winning one. Fatal Bullet, who only beat the favorite, doesn't look to be nearly, nearly as brilliant he, as he was in 2008 and 2009. But we cannot say that for Essence Hitman, who just continues continues his dominant sprinting speed. Up next, if you find yourself out somewhere and the trivia question comes up, who was the favorite in the inaugural Breeders' Cup juvenile filly out at Hollywood Park 27 years ago? The answer is the Canadian Best Arabian. She was 8-5, to five, and on Sunday, we ran the Best Arabian Stakes for the 27th time. They're at the post. They're off in the Best Arabian Stakes. Dance to the moon, Atlantic Hurricane shows a speed to her outside and quickly to the rail. Moonlit a beauty for Jerry Olgain to take the lead. Moonlit a beauty, Zermatt is just three quarters of a length back in second as they come onto the main track. Atlantic Hurricane is third, then a Mullins Beach and a reserve. Ember Song is back in fifth and four and a half lengths off the lead. Then Dance to the Moon and Amiable Grace, Ariana D and Happy Week. Miss Lola trails this field, 10 lengths off the lead of this pace setter. Long shot, Moonlit Beauty. And they head toward the far turn. Moonlit Beauty leads it by a length and a half. Zermatt tracks from a second position. Atlantic Hurricane, third and just two lengths off the lead. Ember Song is still fourth, has three to make up. And down to the inside is a Mullins of Beats. They ran a half in 45 seconds. Moonlit Beauty. Here comes the Seaway winner. Atlantic Hurricane on the far outside. Atlantic Hurricane has forged to the lead. It's Atlantic Hurricane in front. Mullins Beach between horses. Ember Song isn't doing enough. Atlantic Hurricane opening up. Last 16th of a mile, Atlantic Hurricane, an overpowering winner of the Best Arabian. Mullins Beach was second, Ember Song third, and Happy Week fourth. An Atlantic Hurricane who comes off winning the Ontario fashion, the second choice in the wagering, just authors a very authoritative victory in the best arabian at seven furlongs she just sprinted away from this group running the last eighth of a mile in 12 and one very very impressive under eric ransami mullins beach finishes second at nearly 30 to one and the three to two favorite ember song just not able to get to atlantic hurricane i thought eric ransami in this race 
road Atlanta Hurricane extremely confident, and with the result, you can certainly see why. Three races to bring you from Hollywood Park, and in case uh, you didn't make the 101 a.m. our time feature on Friday night, their final Friday night card for the fall meet at Hollywood Park, we have the Night Mover Stakes, Mr. Gruff, the favorite first start since late, uh, late March in Dubai. We're at the post. They're off. Lieutenant Hopeful breaks best and goes for the front. Sirocco strike and Ash Z second and a third. Then to the outside in St. Liam's Halo. Campari is next. Mr. Gruff on the move four deep. A jealous woman is at the back of the pack alongside Alan Stante. Mr. Gruff makes a big move all the way up to take over the lead. And Mr. Gruff super sharp into the far turn. Leads by a length and a half from... Lieutenant Hopeful in second. Campari is three deep in third and two from the front. Then comes Ash Z at the rail. St. Liam's Halo just outside of her. A length and a half to Alan Stante. A jealous woman did not corner well and drops back. Joined by Ash Z and they run to the top of the stretch. And Mr. Gruff is the one to beat in the night mover. Mr. Gruff, a length and a quarter in front. Sirocco strike comes after him. So does Campari in the center. These three to the final furlong. Mr. Gruff is still there. Campari trying to run him down. And he's got a chance. Going to be close. Mr. Gruff, Campari to the outside. Mr. Gruff won't let him by. Campari, Mr. Gruff goes all the way to win. The night mover goes to Mr. Gruff. He beat Campari by a length. Sirocco strike third in St. Liam's Halo was fourth. And as we mentioned, Mr. Gruff off the March 26th Maidan race, only the second race since May 31st of 2010. Did not break well from the gate, but then like a bullet, just dragged Joel Rosario to the early lead on the backside going Six furlongs under the lights at Hollywood Park, rewarding his backers seven dollars uh, even as the favorite. Kimpari, then Shiraco strike, but Ron Ellis, Mr. Gruff. You know, you're talking about two races in a year and a half and a very, very impressive victory in Friday night's night mover. On Saturday afternoon, one of the most prestigious races at the fall meet at Hollywood Park, the 29th running of the Grade 1 Hollywood Turf Cup. Certainly not the deepest bunch, looking like a Grade 2 to me. Horse we've seen in New York, Sanagas, the 8-5 to five favorite. They're at the post. They're off. Bourbon Bay, Mismatch, and Norvsky, who's asked for some speed. These three, quickest early, Sanagas will be four wide around the far turn the first time. He runs up to take over third as Bourbon Bay is now wrangled back to fourth. And the Philly Mismatch is going to set the pace. Then comes Ashtar and Falcon Rock, and the early trailer is Goldwacky. It is mismatch at the top of the stretch the first time. She has the lead by a length and a quarter from Norvsky, who's into the bid early. Sanagas settles into a good stride and a good striking position. Three deep for Rajiv Mirage and two and a half from the front-running mismatch. Bourbon Bay is five lengths behind his stable mate. Then comes Ashtar and Falcon Rock. They've got six lengths to come, and Goldwacky is the trailer. Seven lengths first to last past the stands in the 29th. Hollywood Turf Cup and Miss Match is the leader. She is doing it comfortably up front. Norvsky inches a bit closer in second. Santa Gas will be three wide at the clubhouse turn. He's racing in the clear and two from the front. Falcon Rock and Bourbon Bay are together. Falcon Rock saves some ground at that clubhouse turn and it draws him within three of the lead. Ashtar is still reserved at the back of the pack. He is second to last with five to come and Gold Wacky is the trailer. They turn into the back stretch. Miss Match trying to go it all the way. Still that measured three-quarter length lead over Norvsky in second. Sanagas is right there outside. Norvsky draws within a neck of the lead. Sanagas is a length from the front. 
Bourbon Bay, Falcon Rock, and Ashtar make up the second flight, and they're all about two and a half lengths from the front, and Gold Wacky pushed along at the back of the pack. Sanagas makes his move. There goes Sanagas into the far turn, trying to win it right now, and he is set down going into that far turn. Ashtar is going to run after him in second. Norvsky in mismatch, drop back, now third and fourth. Falcon Rock needs room. Bourbon Bay is next, and Sanagas comes to the top of the stretch, and he's opened up a three-lane lead. Ashtar is pretty much all in in second. Bourbon Bay to the outside. Falcon Rock and Norvsky and Sanagas is dominating the Turf Cup. Sanagas comes by mid-stretch and he's built up a five-length margin. Falcon Rock and Bourbon Bay trying to run him down. Sanagas, 50 yards from home, three and a half in front. Bourbon Bay second. Sanagas all the way. The 29th Hollywood Turf Cup goes in dominating fashion to Sanagas and Rajiv Mirage. They won. Well, I might have been questioning the depth of the field at the highest level, but the performance by Sanagas was a grade one effort, and as was the work of the jockey, Rajiv Mirage, who is escalating up the jockey national colony just opened up this race it was a three turn 12 for a long race and just grabbed the race by the throat entering the far turn and put the pedal to the metal and blew the race open and you know didn't even have to hold on as a comfortable three plus length margin bourbon bay second choice in the wager then falcon rock who outran the 16 to 1 morning line odds finished third but grand motions Sanagas, just a very, very impressive, easy score in the grade one 29th running of the Hollywood Turf Cup. Up next on Sunday, inclement weather hit, and they canceled the racing uh, late on the all-weather track surface. But before they canceled racing, two-year-olds in the moccasin. They're at the post. They're off. Woe be gone and Eva's joy break best. Made to love her right between those two away in third. Lady Hokulea is a close fourth and the early trailer is Evelyn's dancer. Woe be gone is fastest out of the chute and leads by just a half length from Lady Hokulea who's up into second. Eva's joy now backs off third and a length and three quarters from the lead. Made to love her just inside of Eva. Then comes Evelyn's dancer fifth and last. Five lengths from first to last up the back stretch in the 25th Moccasin Stakes two year old Old Phillies past the half mile pole and Wobegon is the leader. Wobegon is a neck in front of Lady Hokulea in second. Made to love her is racing in third. Now two and a half from the front. Eva's Joy just outside of her. Also two and a half from the lead. Evelyn's Dancer has trailed throughout. They round the far turn and head to the quarter pole and Wobegon is in front and she's getting away at the top of the stretch. Wobegon is now two lengths in front. Eva's Joy and Made to Love Her go by Lady Hokulea who's dropped back. Evelyn's Dancer takes fourth top of the stretch. Wobegon, here comes Made to Love Her right alongside and blowing right on by. Made to Love Her, the new leader to the 16th pole and she is suddenly three lengths in front. Evelyn's Dancer and Eva's Joy will battle Wobegon be gone for second made to love her the 25th moccasin stakes goes to made to love her three and a half lengths at the end evelyn's dancer split horses to get second by a nose over eva's joy will be gone finished for it and you see the black pants of rafael bejaran on the weather would get much worse approximately 30 minutes later, canceling the race. But made to love her in the sixth career start, wins the moccasin after most recently at Santanita, breaking the maiden. She scores by four, the offspring of Stevie Wonderboy, who was the juvenile champion six years ago. And you might think that distance of ground could be her game. Made to love her, coming to hand, you know, breaking her maiden in her fifth career start, then beating winners the first time, was the third choice in the wagering. The favorite... Well, we'll finish with Evelyn's Dancer was the longest price on the board at 16 to 1. She runs second, just finishing ahead of Ava's Joy, who was the 8 to 5 favorite in the second career start after debuting up at Golden Gate. But uh, no match for uh, Made to Love Her, the convincing victor in the moccasin stakes. And we'll see if she decides to stretch out to two turns in the uh, Hollywood Starlet next up. But uh, very impressive 
First time versus winners. Made to love her. The $7.80 winner of Sunday's Moccasin Stakes. We're going to take a quick break. When we return, five from the Big A. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Five stakes races to bring you over the weekend from and during the week from the Big A. Up first, two-year-old fillies in the May night stakes. Originally supposed to be a mile 16th on the turf. Washed off. Going to be a mile. The only main track only. Lady Cohiba, two to five. They're in the gate. And they're off. Court of Dreams on the inside. On the outside, take it inside. And the cute cadet field moving up the back stretch. And it is take it inside on the outside with the lead. Cute cadet there with her second on the inside by six links now. And Court of Dreams races in third, followed by Lassa Man Mama. And the trailer is Lady Goiba. Up the back stretch, duel continues here between Take It Inside and Cute Cadet. They duel through a quarter in the slop and 23 flat. Eight lengths ahead of the rest of the field. Lady Goiba now moves up to be third on the outside. Then Lassa Manamama, and the trailer is Court of Dreams. Halfway home with Cute Cadet and Take It Inside through a half, demanding 46 and four over this going here. Five lengths back, Lady Goiba. Now third, getting within six lengths of the lead. In the meantime, Cute Cadet has shrugged off, taken inside. Lady Goiba passing her from the far outside, last Samana Mama, and down toward the rail, Quarter of Dreams comes up, now grabbing fourth. Coming to the top of the stretch, the softened up Cute Cadet challenge by Lady Goiba, who goes on by. Lady Goiba has taken the lead and has done it willingly with very little urging here from Jose Lascano. They got a three length lead. Could a challenge come from Laza Manamama? Now second on the outside, but five lengths behind. And Court of Dreams third, but like a statue in the stirrups. Jose Lascano and Lady Goiba virtually eased in the last furlong. Laza Manamama was second, and Court of Dreams was third. Well, about as easy a stakes victory as you'll ever get in the second for the second career start. Lady Cohiba, first time Lasix, Live Oak Plantation. You see the familiar silks, Christophe Clement, Jose Lescano, the only main track, only entrant in this race had the field over a bell, returning $2.80 on the sloppy sealed racetrack last Wednesday. Thursday afternoon at the Big A scheduled stakes race in the opener. Rail trip, two to five in the sunny and mild stakes. In the gate. And they're off. Oh, a bad stumble at the start, throwing Ramon Dominguez from Rail Trip. Ramon uh, bounced right back up. And heavily favored Rail Trip is riderless. 
as the field moves into the clubhouse turn. Changing things quite a bit now with most happy fella in front. Ron the Greek stalking on the outside. Three lengths back to bigger is better. Four, five lengths now back to more than a reason and the riderless rail trip. So the field makes the turn into the back stretch run. Most happy fella being prompted with light pressure from Ron the Greek. Break of five, back to bigger is better. And then down toward the inside, more than a reason as the field continues up the back stretch run. It was a 24 and one opening quarter mile here. And it is most happy fella still sparring here with Ron the Greek. Ron the Greek under a pretty good hold there by Jose Lascano. In the meantime, going by them is rail trip. Break of another half a dozen lengths back to bigger is better and more than a reason as the field reaches the half mile pole. The half was 49 flat in the money going here and most happy fella Carlos Montalvo asking him for a bit more and now Lascano says go with Ron the Greek. They're a half length behind with three furlongs remaining here. Getting closer more than a reason and bigger is better as they make their way toward the top of the stretch. Most happy fella struggling here to hold off Ron the Greek. Justin behind bigger is better more than a reason right alongside him as the field turns for home. Off the turn into the stretch and Ron the Greek assumes the lead at the top of the stretch. Ron the Greek in front. Now Lascano asking more from him. And then it's most happy fella down inside. Bigger is better. Fights on him between horses. Down to the final 16th of a mile and it is Ron the Greek. Ron the Greek is going to do it here by almost five on the line. Bigger is better, is finishing second. Most happy fella finishes third. And the unfortunate rail trip, as well as those show betters here, big show prices are on as the favorite finishes off the board. And now we understand why they call them bridge jumpers. They're off, you lose. Rail trip. An enigma since coming east. We'll touch on him in just a moment. But Ron the Greek, second choice at 2-1. to one. Ron the Greek is 0-9 since winning Le Le Comp nearly 22 months ago. Been laid off nearly three and a half months since Saratoga, but scores the five-length convic convincing victor, uh, Lescano over Lescano. Most happy fella, longest shot on the board at 24-1, finishes third. Most happy fella returns $29 to show. Ron the Greek pays six seventy to win and six eighty to show. Thank you very much for Rail Trip running about one step before dumping Ramon Dominguez. Oh, those show betters. Saturday, a couple stakes races to bring you up first, uh, named after the 1988 Japan Cup winner, also Red Smith winner when they used to run it over Memorial Day weekend. The Pay the Butler Stakes, mile 16th on the turf, four to five. Right one. They're in the gate. And they're off. Lubash with a little speed. Tune me in down toward the inside. Those two to vie for the early lead as they move by us for the first time. Sal the Barber gets a spot at the inside. No wallet between horses. Now races fourth. Missing Lisa Lewis fifth on the outside. Cause and Freedom is sixth. Kindergarten Kid rides the rails into the turn, now back in seventh. And it's flaming Hot, hard held while eighth. Three lengths back to right one is allowed to settle at the back of the pack. And the last of them all is many punts. So around the clubhouse turn, up top, it's tuned me in. The leader by a length, Lubash, runs along in second, two lengths back. No wallop, rating back in third. Well held is Sal the Barber, fourth, after a 23-4 and four opening quarter mile. And then it is Cause of Freedom, is now fifth on the rail by a head. Missing Lisa Lewis out there, racing along in six. Kindergarten Kid settled back in seventh. Then Flamin' Hot, followed by Right One, who's still on hold. The trailer is Benny Punt with a half mile remaining. Heading for the far turn. Tune me up. Loose on the lead after a 48 and two opening half mile. Lubash runs in second. No wallop third on the outside. Then down toward the rail, it's Sal the Barber. Around the far turn. Tune me in, still on top. Lubash second. Here comes Sal the Barber now, mounting a bit on the outside third. No wall up under the whip is fourth as the field turns into the stretch. Off the turn, into the stretch. It is Lubash, Sal the Barber. Those two head to head for the lead now. Tune me in is faded back to third. And then it's Kindergarten Kid who's fourth, a furlong to go here. And it is Sal the Barber, Kindergarten Kid coming. 
and right one with a late move down the outside. Down to the wire. Kindergarten Kid gets up. Kindergarten Kid, the winner, sailed the barber with second, followed by right one third, close for fourth between Tunbian and Lubash. And Kindergarten Kid, late inside move for Junior Alvarado. Now for, you know, Kindergarten Kid, who drew the rail, which I think is very tough in these minor 16th races, and usually likes to be up close, was actually wrangled back as the field collapses on the dog leg. But Junior Alvarado stayed inside, got the run, and scored the victory. You know, this horse has been 0 for 5 in stakes. This is the first stakes win for Kindergarten Kid now. You know, in the 0 for 5 for Kindergarten Kid, you know, quite frankly, it usually gets much tougher than this listed stakes race in, in the pay of the butler. But a neck victory over Sal the Barber, who looked to be moving very well under Ramon Dominguez on the turn. And right one, who is over two since winning the Jaipur on July 16th, does put in some late run under Javier Castellano to hit the board and finish third as the 9-10 to 10 favorite in Saturday's pay the butler. The other stakes race on Saturday's card, three-year-olds going nine furlongs in the Discovery, and the seven-to-five favorite coming out of a very nice victory in the Oklahoma Derby, redeemed. They're in the gate. And they're off. A bad stumble at the break there for Philly Ace, left at the back of the pack. So it's redeemed and Ghost Gunner who race for the lead together as they move for the clubhouse turn. Social Saul three wide, Raison de Tot four wide. Arthur's tail gets hung five wide into the turn. El Thebe rides the rails into the turn. And at the back of the pack early on here are Philly Ace and Golden Gulch. So into the back stretch run they go. Ghost Gunner is the leader. Redeemed, hard held in the hands of Edgar Prado. 24 flat was the opening quarter mile. And then at Social Saul is third toward the inside. Raison d'etat, nudged along on the outside, fourth about four and a half from the lead now. And then Arthur's tail is drafting in behind horses while fifth. Then Elthy, Philly Ace, and at the back is Golden Gulch. Up the back stretch run, first quarter, 24 flat. The half mile in 48 and two-fifths seconds. The pace very reasonable here with Ghost Gunner continuing to dictate the pace. The favored, redeemed, is right at his uh, uh, flank on the outside, second. And here comes Raison de Tot put to a drive now. Raison de Tot now moving up to be third. Social Saul's now back forth toward the inside. On the far outside, Arthur's tail begins to roll. Oh, Ghost Gunner's been pulled up. Ghost Gunner has been pulled up. And now they're coming to the top of the stretch. Redeemed is the leader. And Raison de Tot is second. Arthur's tail is third on the outside. And Social Saul fourth at the rail. Off the turn into the stretch. And redeemed is the leader. The leader now by almost two as they come into the final furlong. Social Saw getting through on the inside. Now to be second. Raison de Tot is third. Arthur's tail struggling well in fourth. And El Thieb is fifth as they come down to the finish. It is redeemed. Redeemed in the discovery. He went up by two and a half lengths over Social Saw. Wound up being close for third there between Raison de Tot and Arthur's tail. Well, Redeemed wins again coming out of Remington Park and scoring the, you know, front end victory as the 7-5 favorite under Edgar Prado. Richard Dutro Jr. just going lights out right now, ladies and gentlemen. And the familiar silks, the very familiar silks of JMS Stable. They defeat Social Sol coming out of the Remington Park, Oklahoma Derby. And Raison de Tot, who was brutal in the Traverse Stakes and was training better, makes his... First start since the Travers as the co-second choice at 3-1. to one. Checks in third, but $4.90 for Redeemed in Saturday's Discovery. And one stakes race to bring you on Sunday. That's the Adirondack home going a mile. 8-5, to five, groomed for victory. And they're off. Driven by success, breaks on top. Johannesburg smiles away second, followed by Groom for Victory, who's out there running third early on here. And then it is Beauty in the Pulpit, followed by Ichabod Crane, and Spa City Fever's under stout restraint while taking up a position in last place. So the field moves up the backstretch run, and driven by success, just breezing along on the lead. 
24 flat was the opening quarter mile. Johannesburg Spa just off his flank second, tucked in behind Groom for victory. Beauty in the pulpit, out there in the clear and running along in fourth, Igabod Crane. Only four and a half lengths from the lead, a break of another three and a half. Back to Spa City Fever, trailing the field as they approach the half mile point. It is still driven by success, who runs an uncontested half in 47 and one fifth seconds. On the outside, here comes Johannesburg Spa now, starting to mount a bid for the lead with a bit more than three furlongs to go. Room for victory is ready to roll. He continues to run just in behind the lead, while third on the outside, Beauty in the Pulpit is fourth. Then Ichabod Crane, three lengths back to Spa City Fever, is still about seven from the lead as the field turns for home. Off three quarters and 11 and two. It is Johannesburg smile up for a short lead. Ichabod Crane squeezes through on the rail. And now Groom for Victory is cut loose into the final 16th. Groom for Victory and Johannesburg smile. Nothing between them. Ichabod Crane third. It is going to be Groom for Victory narrowly. Over Johannesburg smile. Ichabod Crane was third. Well, Groom for Victory scores the favorite victory in here. First start since being claimed for 62500 down at Gulfstream Park on February 12th for Richard Dutro Jr. Wins by head to Pete's Johannesburg. Smile, Ichabod Crane, who we've been seeing run in New York as the second and third choice. The trifecta paid, and this is for $2, ladies and gentlemen, $24.80, but the offspring of Victory Gallup does hold on to score the victory for Ramon Dominguez in Sunday's Adirondack Home. That wraps up this uh, week's edition of Horses and Courses. We certainly invite you to enjoy the sensational holiday racing coming up from around the country. Enjoy your Thanksgiving with your family. We'll see you next time on Horses and Courses. <laughs>